Hello and welcome again. In this lesson we are gonna uh, learn how to install and configure DHCP on Windows Server 2019. Okay, so uh, actually uh, we could launch the server manager as you can see from here. If you don't have it by default on the taskbar, as you can see it's not by default on the taskbar, so you could pin it here or you could search type in server and then server manager from there and launch it from there okay so uh, after that we can go to manage and then manage add the rule and feature remember that's manage if you want to add rules and or remove rules uh, and features you could go to manage tab when you install something you could find it under tools as you can see okay like the case of dns active directory and so on. So uh, we are after installation of DHCP server. Gonna check the box next to DHCP server feature and next, next, and restart destination if necessary. So and the install right there. So it will take a couple of uh, seconds to uh, finish the installation. So basically DHCP uh, stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol and what it does is actually allocates IP addresses to hosts on the network. Imagine that you are an administrator working for an enterprise company with more than let's say 600 users okay? and imagine that sitting next to each computer and configuring a static IP address, it's pain. Okay, so that's why they create the CP to give IP addresses to hosts automatically. Okay, on the uh, enterprise environment, as you can see, the CP configuration is finished. I don't need to restart, so I'm gonna go complete the CP configuration from here, from within here, or I can close and go. As you can see, I have triangle in here, yellow triangle, which means there is something missing to be completed. Uh, feature or some installation that need to be finished so as, as you can see it complete the CP configuration and the first thing which we need to do is we need to commit and authorize the HCP server so as you can see authorizing the HCP server creating security groups is done for the HCP and authorizing the server so uh, sometimes if you don't authorize the server it's not going to actually work although you create the scope range and exclusion you finish all the DHCP configuration but you need to authorize the server to give it the authority to allocate IP addresses so from uh, the under the uh, tools tab you can fire up DHCP and then I'm gonna go as you can see IPv4 and it's in green here I can go here and for example I can go to right click on the domain and an authorize notice what will happen here so after refresh So after refresh, if it's not authorized, I'm not gonna get any, okay? Uh, I'm gonna let it later so I could authorize it again. So I'm gonna create scope, new scope. I'm gonna name it a DHCP. This is basically the description. This is a DHCP server. Um, server here. Okay, that's uh, allocate IP addresses, IPv4 addresses to hosts. Okay, so the first thing uh, we are asked is a range. So, range actually is the range of IP addresses, the first IP and the last IP. So, we need to define a range. Okay, of IP addresses. So in this case, we can allocate the entire subnet. I'm using 192.168.1.0 as the network. Starting from one, so the first IP, usable IP is 1.1. .1. 
the last usable IP, you guessed it, 68.1.254, since I'm using slash 24 as you can see, and then next. Now, 192.168 is not 69, so, okay, you could check that on the local server, as you can see, and then you could check the private IP address, and as you can see, look at this one here, 182.168.1.1, and then slash 24 mask. I close in here, I'm going to go back to my uh, configuration, and then next. So this is the first IP, the last IP, I mean the entire range, but after that, what we're going to do, we're going to exclude, okay, some IP addresses. Why we need this ex exclusion? We need the exclusion, we need to exclude all the okay the uh, static ip addresses configured on our network okay for example the server itself it has dot one dot one so why we did the exclusion because dhcp if we actually don't exclude those ip addresses that are configured or given statically to hosts dhcp will give them to another host then two hosts with the same ip address it's called dhcp conflict and none of them will actually function or work or communicate on the network. So let's do the exclusion. I'm going to take the first 10 IP addresses because I'm using the first IP address for the server. If I'm using the, um, the last IP address for the server, we could exclude the last 10 IP addresses. I'm going to add in here and then next. Next, next. Default router, we really don't need default router, but for the sake of the installation, we could actually use the IP address of the server just to show you how to add default gateway if you really run in DCP or standalone DCP and you are configuring the server as default gateway. I'm gonna say next. And then, as you can see, I'm getting an IP pane here, which is not the correct DNS server. I'm going to remove it here. Then I'm going to add the uh, DNS IP address, which is the server IP address. So server IP address is the DNS server, DSCP server, and so on. one I'm going to add. It's checking or validating if DNS is uh, configured. And link to this IP let's find it and then next it's also a uh, parent domain as you can see then next and then wins uh, server so basically one server maps a single host name to an IP uh, address we could use uh, wins if we uh, have installed the feature of wins we could skip it at least for now but you could use it for example let's use the wins Let's uh, say that we are going to install the wins later on on this uh, server. So the server will host wins, DNS, DHCP and other features and then next and finish. So as you can see this uh, blue, the blue color in here on the IP means that the DHCP is not authorized because remember we unauthorize it. I'm going to go and Unauthorize, it's authorized before, and then it says unauthorize, unauthorized, so it's authorized. Let's actually refresh this, and now let's actually unauthorize, which means it's authorized and everything is green. We could actually check the configuration after, okay? Other is pool, this is the range basically from 1 to 254. This is the exclusion range that we take out from the ACP so, so the server don't give those IPs to hosts from 1 to 10 because the server itself is signed the static IP address from this range. Least addresses, actually every IP address that is given to hosts will appear under leased address leases. Okay. And then uh, we could go to reservation. If you want to configure some printers with static IP address, you could reserve some IP addresses, okay, to those devices. 
scope options as you can see we have a couple of options regarding the cp scope the router which is the default gateway dns server okay so hosts or clients they need to know where it's a dns server because the clients they need to join the domain and they need to know who's the dns on the uh, network dns domain name as well so it's need to be configured i think those three things the router default gateway a dns server and the main name okay as you can see right there those are options that's actually allocated along with the ip address okay from the server there is dscp v4 and as well as dscp v6 for ipv6 you could do that also and then i think we are good to go right now okay i'm gonna leave it open right here and then that's it so this is the dhcp configuration and after a host gets an ip from dhcp actually you could see the least addresses okay on the dhcp right here okay and the leases address leases right here and you would see the least addresses right there okay for troubleshooting you could check those tabs okay the range okay it should match okay the uh, should be on the same network that you're using uh, that you're given address to the server as you can see we're given the first IP address to the server that's the entire subnet that we're using here and DHCP scopes you could uh, actually check the uh, default gateway and the DNS server and then the domain name okay and so that's actually about troubleshooting so i hope this has been informative for you and i would like to thank you